Uh, so I'm going to be talking about 3D imaging here at the British Library. Um, so we've started exploring with uh, 3D um, here at the British Library in 2015 with two uh, distinct uh, collections, Hebrew manuscripts and Chinese oracle bones. Uh, the method we use here is photogrammetry, as Donald mentioned, um, which in basically it's uh, the creation of a 3D structure from uh, a series of overlapping two-dimensional images. Um, back in the day, we, uh, we did everything in-house, so imaging was done in-house, and um, the 3D modeling uh, I've done using a software uh, called um, Photoscan, and uh, I could do it because I came out just out of uh, MicroPass, uh, straight into the library, so uh, it's another long-term uh, impact of, of the project. Um, and as Donald mentioned, a few months ago, we purchased uh, a rig from, from Cyril, which um, is... Um, um, it's basically a set of cameras uh, mounted on a, on a, on a frame uh, with a turntable, and this enables us to do um, 3D more quickly, more efficiently, um, hopefully uh, at scale as well. And uh, now as we, we do the imaging in-house, the imaging studio, and uh, Cyril does the, the actual modeling. Um, these models are uploaded to a platform called Sketchfab, which is uh, the largest online platform for sharing 3D models. Um, and um, on, through this platform, people can, uh, can explore the models, and most of them are also available for download. Um, and uh, as you can see, we have a surprisingly large um, uh, and very diverse collection of uh, objects which are not uh, books, manuscripts, or, 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 or journals, or newspapers. And um, uh, this can include, for example, um, ornate boxes or ostraca, which, uh, which are pieces of um, potsherds with writing, figurines, um, etc. So, um, for example, see this um, carrying case from a probably 19th century Nigeria, which was used to, uh, to carry loose leaves of the Quran, a richly illuminated Quran. Um, and uh, it's made of leather and fabric and, uh, and pulpboard, and, um, and it's beautiful in 3D and very engaging. Uh, we also have here uh, the, a portable writing desk of Jane Austen, uh, which is um, it's beautiful and it's a very natural candidate um, uh, to be 3D modeled. And another example is this um, Ostracon from uh, a collection of about 4,000 uh, 4, 4, um, Ostraca, which the British Library uh, got from the um, Egyptian Antiquities Department at the British Museum in the last century. So we like to, to look at it as uh, one of the earliest handouts, uh, which was it's a sixth century uh, written in Greek, and it was given, uh, it has a prayer or, or a chant, it was given to a church congregation. So the benefits of 3D are great. They greatly enhance the experience of viewing an object online. They can be used in a physical and also a virtual exhibition. They can very easily be embedded into online content, such as blogs, such as um, um, articles. And uh, they can be used uh, in gaming and creative industries. It's quite similar to, uh, to Richard's artwork. Um, and also, they're very good for social media engagement. Everybody liked them. And in a way, it's, it's just another way to document and digitally preserve collection items. We did some 3D printing as well with a company called um, Think C3D. Um, these, um, these were used uh, for exhibition tours as handling objects for the visually impaired. Uh, they were also used for conservation purposes. Uh, they helped plan for rehousing the oracle bones without actually having to handle the real objects. So to sum up, this is a new way of creating and using our digital collections, and it's awesome. <laughs> Thank you.